Welcome to this demonstration on document workflow. I will focus on extracting file details from incoming documents. Let's start by taking a look at our test site here. We'll go to our shared documents folder. That's where we're going to uh, add our workflow to. Alright, now that we're here, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and uh, open Visual Studio. So let's go ahead and minimize the portal. Pull up Visual Studio. I'm going to be using Visual Studio 2008. So go ahead and start a new project. And under our projects, we have Office 2007 projects. I'm going to choose a SharePoint 2007 sequential workflow. Give it a name. Okay. So after you do that, the first thing it's going to do is ask, uh, come up with a wizard. It's going to ask you where do you want this. Uh, workflow to be deployed to. So I'm going to go back to my team site here. I'm going to grab the URL for the team site because that's where I want to deploy. Now you can uh, change the deploy location later if you like, but um, in this case I'm just going to pop that URL right here in my uh, in the wizard and go ahead and hit the next button. The next thing the wizard is going to ask me is if it wants me to associate the workflow with that SharePoint list automatically versus me manually having to do it. And I will, and I'm going to associate it with this uh, shared documents folder. It also gives me an opportunity to change where the history list and the task list reside as well. So once I've done that, it then asks me how do I want the workflow started, and I'm going to choose a manual or when an item is created. I can choose a third option, but I'm just going to stick with those two. So, once you've done that, the wizard will go ahead and create your Visual Studio project, but I just want to show you over here and the properties for this particular uh, project. I can change where uh, some of those values that I filled on the wizard uh, came from. So the display property, for example, and how it was, how the workflow would be started, and those sort of things. So as you can see, I've got pretty much all of the options that the wizard created for me at my disposal, and I can modify them as as I want to. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at this first uh, activity that, that you get by default when you start the workflow project from Moss. That activity, the on a, uh, workflow uh, activated, has two important properties, the correlation tokens and the workflow properties. I won't get into those in, in much detail right now, but you should look that up uh, in the Windows SDK or on MSDN, get a little more detail. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, new uh, workflow activities that they, they give us here. So in the tool pane, uh, here on the left, let me stretch a little bit so we can see. You've got the SharePoint workflow activities and there's a bunch of new activities there. And then you have the older work, Windows workflow 3.0 activities. And then there's a few for 3.5, but we won't be using those at the moment. Alright, so first thing I'm going to do in my workflow here is I'm going to add a logging activity because I'd like to log when the workflow starts. That way I know there's no problem, at least at that point. I'm going to call this one log workflow start. And then I get to put in the history description. This will be what shows up uh, on the uh, SharePoint portal for this work particular workflow uh, log or workflow history. So now that I've gotten that, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to use a, a if else activity, which is in the work, workflow 3.0 uh, activity controls. I'm going to drop it here on the, on the pane. And in this case, the, act, the uh, file details that I want is the, whether or not the uh, file meets a certain extension. Is that if it's a valid extension for, in our case, it'll be resumes. So I'm going to call this one check for validation extensions. And the first side of the if statement is going to be uh, if the um, extension is valid. So I'll call is valid extension. On the right hand side, we're going to put down um, the workflow for when it's not valid or not valid extension. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm going to use a, um, oh, let's start with the left side. We're just going to log it if it is a valid extension. We're going to do something uh, later on in one of the future recordings with the file if it is valid. So I'm just going to log that it was a valid extension and if I wanted to, I could do anything with it once it is valid. So I'll say we'll just have a valid extension here in the description. Now, what I'll do on the uh, on the right-hand side 
is I'm going to go ahead and put in some custom code that uh, will delete the file if it's not a valid extension. So if it's not one of the file types that I'm looking for, the ac action I'm going to do is just delete it. And um, after I delete it, I'm going to go ahead and terminate the workflow. There's no reason to continue workflow once I've, once I've uh, deleted it. Okay? So let's call this one terminate workflow. Now, if I have a larger workflow, this makes sense. On a smaller workflow, it would be it would the workflow would end anyway uh, after the delete. But I just want to show you what you had. So the other thing I could do here, if I wanted to terminate with an error, I could create a workflow property and then in code I could fill that property with some value, some string that says why the workflow ended. I'm not going to do that in this case. All right. So now that I've got that done, the um, next thing to do is. Uh, well, actually, you know what? Let me add one more code activity in here, which I will show you how to get the uh, the extension here in code. Um, so I'm going to call this one "Get uh, File Extension." So I'll add that activity. Go ahead, and that will be the first one that I fill in the code for. All right. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a uh, a uh, class level variable that will hold my file extension, so I'll just call that file extension, and um, I'll go ahead and um, put in the code to, to grab the, the file extension, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the file name, so we're going to get the extension from the file name, so I'll put a string here for file name, initialize it to empty, and then just to make sure we actually have a file, I'm going to go ahead and evaluate the uh, workflow property. The workflow property is a property that uh, Visual Studio gives you by default for this type of project and it's of SP workflow activity properties. It's probably the most pro uh, powerful property that you get. Um, it has it has all the state from the workflow passed from SharePoint to Visual Studio. And so as you can see I've got a lot of things about the workflow and the item that I'm working on uh, straight from that workflow property. Again this is all of the information that's passed from the portal to me. So I'm going to use the uh, workflow properties item file property and actually I'm going to go ahead and get the file uh, name um, from the workflow property. So that's the file in the SharePoint list. I just want to make sure that that is not equal to string empty. Alright, so now that I know I have a file name, I'm going to go ahead and put in a little bit of code here using the uh, substring uh, to uh, get the file extension, um, which will be the last uh, four characters of the of the uh, file name here. So it's the dot. I'm sorry, not the last four, but anything after the the last period in the file name. So I'll go to file name. I'll say substring. I'm sorry, last index of the last decimal point. Go ahead and finish that off. All right. So now that I've done that, the uh, the next thing that I need to do is uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, I think the next thing for me to do is to go ahead and. Uh, put in the value for when the left side of the if statement is true. So I could use either a code condition or a declarative rule condition. I'm going to go ahead and use a declarative rule condition uh, just because it's easier in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and click here and create this. Now I'm going to hard code what extensions are valid and which ones aren't. Normally in the uh, real world I would actually read this from another SharePoint list or a database but in this case I'll go ahead and so let's say if the file extension equals, we will allow for uh, uh, docx's which are Office 2007 or Word 2007 files, uh, or um, if the extension is a which the old Word uh, file format prior to 2007. So we'll go ahead and put. Uh,